Hey, um, I'm not a scientist, but I can put my head on the body of some guy wearing a lab coat for a YouTube video about science. Um, lately, I've seen a number of anti-scientific rants from believers here. I'm not going to mention any names, but you look and I'll whistle. <laughs> a gin-soaked Mel Gibson reacts better to a female police officer he believes to be Jewish than some Christians react to discussions of science and evolution. Um, in any case, I wanted to recommend a couple of discussions pertinent to scientific matters uh, that were recently broadcast on the local uh, public radio station here in New York, WNYC. Uh, the station has a YouTube channel. There's a quick link uh, to the right of the screen for those interested in checking it out. Uh, the first of these discussions was with Gary Marcus, who is a professor of psychology at New York University and author of the book Kluge, the haphazard construction of the human mind. Um, the human brain is often thought of as an intelligently and elegantly designed mission control center. However, Dr. Marcus argues that in many ways the human brain is a rather clumsily designed product of evolution, a process that sometimes optimizes things and sometimes gets them to a place where they're merely good enough. Um, as the review of Dr. Marcus's book in New Scientist put it, quote, while evolution can achieve impressive feats of engineering, it's also capable of some sloppy work. Um, Dr. Marcus makes a compelling case for the proposition that the human brain is the product of blind rather than intelligent design. It gets the job done, but often quite inefficiently and clumsily. Not exactly imago dei here. Now, some believers impose a theological take on all of this, characterizing these imperfections or design flaws as the results of sin. Uh, but one can see how that sort of talk doesn't really get anywhere by comparing it to, for example, Dr. Marcus's explanation, which reminds us yet again that things like inefficiencies and other flaws in the human brain's operations make sense really only in light of a blind process of design, namely evolution, that is very much incomplete. I've put a link to the right of the screen uh, for the discussion with Dr. Marcus from WNYC. Um, click on the link and scroll down to the segment entitled Clumsy Brain. Uh, also to the right of the screen is a link to Dr. Marcus's appearance on the CBC program, The Hour. Uh, this is a far less edifying discussion than the one on WNYC, but it's shorter for those who are pressed for time or who have uh, concentration issues. As Dr. Marcus says, we all have. Um, there's also a link to the website for the book, Kluge. Um, the second discussion is with the brilliant Kenneth Miller of Brown University. Um, I suspect more people will be familiar with Dr. Miller than Dr. Marcus. Dr. Miller, a theist, is a professor of biology at Brown, and his most recent book is entitled Only a Theory, Evolution and the Battle for America's Soul. Um, Dr. Miller also testified as an expert witness in the 2005 case Kitzmiller v. Dover Area School District which was the landmark case in which it was held that intelligent design is not a scientific theory, but a religious one, and as such may not be taught as an alternative to evolution in the public school science classroom. Uh, for anyone who's never read the splendidly thorough and well-reasoned Kitzmiller decision, there's a link to it to the right of the screen. In the discussion on WNYC, Dr. Miller masterfully explains the deceptive and ultimately dangerous game, it's really a propaganda and bullying campaign, being played by the advocates of intelligent design. They're attempting to steer around the rigors of science by going, as Dr. Miller puts it, directly to the levers of government to get an intellectual handout that would, for example, mandate the teaching of intelligent design as an alternative to evolution without having to demonstrate the scientific merit of intelligent design. Of course, one of the primary components of the ID Advocates campaign is to claim 
that there's a nefarious conspiracy against them, in effect, in the scientific and academic communities, a conspiracy that prevents them from getting their stuff published, that imperils their ability to get and keep positions on college and university faculties, and so on. Uh, among the latest efforts in this part of the campaign is Ben Stein's film, Expelled, No Intelligence Allowed. Now, let me tell you, um, when it comes to things like, for example, producing a solid academic publication record, this sort of bullshit conspiratorial claim is not unique to the advocates of intelligent design. Um, I've spent the last 14 years of my professional life in academia, and I've been involved with more than a few tenure or promotion cases in which candidates failed because of their dismal or even non-existent publication records. Nine out of ten of these failed candidates will blame anything and anyone other than themselves for their lack of scholarly progress. Um, it's almost never their own fault. One encounters much the same phenomenon in prisons, where, if the inmates are to be believed, few, if any of them, are guilty of the crimes for which they're serving time. The truth of the matter is that if one's scholarly work isn't getting published, it's because one's scholarly work does not merit publication. In other words, it's no good. Period. End of story. Anyone who says otherwise either doesn't know what he or she is talking about, is laboring under some sort of delusion, or is not telling the truth. By the way, the mendacious intelligent design campaign is no longer uniquely American. Um, as Dr. Miller discusses, it's spreading through Europe, um, including in the United Kingdom and the Netherlands. Um, I've put a link to the WNYC discussion with Dr. Miller to the right of the screen. It's well worth listening to. Uh, click on the link and scroll down to the first segment called Intelligent Design, Only a Theory. I've also put a link to a video here on YouTube of Dr. Miller giving a talk on all of this at Case Western University in Ohio. Um, that is substantially longer, um, but it's also worth one's attention. One must remain informed about these sorts of things, uh, lest the howls of ignorance and deception drown out the voices speaking truth. Thanks very much.